Uh, can we give Cody and Lauren a big, big clap? I mean, wow. Come on, keep clapping. Clap a little louder. They did a great job. And how about the, their whole team? The whole team, and stay standing. We need to stretch. And then every speaker that we've had so far, fantabulistic. Give all our speakers a big clap. Okay, so let me tell you where I'm coming from. I flew myself out here. I'm speaking for free. I want to be here just because I love Cody and Lauren. I think that they're just amazing human beings. And I also believe that we are in a pivotal time in history. How many of you sense that? Like, wow. Okay. And I believe that in the midst of the challenges that we're going through, that life is going to give you some breaks in October, November, December that are going to blow you away. This is not just going to be a hush year, 2020. You're about to do some gigantic things. Come on, clap your hands if you believe this. Come on. Bring it out of me like they do in every other place. So, I really don't waste my time. I'm not here just to, to chat. I'm here to stir up a revolution in you. Because I think your families need you to hit that high level. How many would admit your family needs you to hit that high level? Just lift your hands. And How many feel like our nation needs us to hit that high level? So I'm going to talk under the time that I'm given like I always do. And so if you could put the monitor there so I could see that. And, but you're going to get something out of it. But I want you to drink it in. And I don't want you to fidget around and go, oh, another speaker, because I'm going to download some stuff into you. I think that some of you are one conversation away from doing something amazing. Is there anybody here that has what I call a divine dissatisfaction where you believe there's more to life than what you're living? Just lift your hands, OK? All right, so we're going to go get that thing. Clap your hands if you're ready. Come on. You may be seated. There was a man by the name of Walt Disney, and he walked into an amusement park. And that was in the 30s. And he said, I'm going to build myself an amusement park, but mine is going to be different, better, and more magical. I want you to say that. Say different, better, and more magical. Growing up in Compton, California with seven people in a two-bedroom apartment, I want you to visualize this. <laughs> That's called cramped. <laughs> and then we had a Volkswagen bug. Somebody lift your hands if you remember the Volkswagen bug. So we had seven people in a Volkswagen bug. That's called illegal. <laughs> My mother's Spanish, Vesentita Gonzalez, sixth grade education. My father, 10th grade education. Even though we were lower income, we were an over lower class. And my mother taught me, don't do a halfway job. Somebody just say, that's good. One day, my father went to go get my mother something to eat. He was just that kind of a guy. It was a days before DoorDash. And uh, he went through a green light. And a police officer was chasing somebody without his siren on or his light on, bless his heart, because he turned out to be a great guy. 
And he hit my father and instantly killed him. And so, you know, that's a little bit tough, you know? Because we're already lower income and we were already dysfunctional. <laughs> and we were a little off. And then we, we lost the energy of the house who was my father. And we were stuck in what I call an almost life. In 1999, a friend of mine who you would know brought another friend of mine who you know. But the one actor that brought him, he doesn't like to be talked about. But the other guys said I could talk about him because he's one of my best friends. And so this actor that you know about that doesn't like to be talked about brought an actor who doesn't mind me talking about him. He brought Robert Downey Jr. to me in 1999, and Robert was struggling with addiction. Soon he'd be on the cover of Newsweek magazine and they would say that he's finished. <laughs> I talked to a famous agent that you would know who he is, and he told me, Tim, I know you love to help everybody, but I, I just want you to know Robert's done. But I want you to know that you're never done unless God says you're done. Let me try that again. I said, you're, you're never done until God says you're done. Clap your hands if that makes any sense. You just. So Robert said to me, I want you to do me a favor. Just help me to make my life OK. Now, why is that so important? Because when you have a life interruption, I want you to hear this, whether it be a divorce or whether you got molested when you were a kid or you have cancer, or your son, your daughter's in trouble, or there's COVID-19, what happens is many times is you go from thinking about doing something great to just being okay. And I, and I, I said, Robert, I, I said, that would be very difficult to just make your life okay because there's going to be something screaming from you your whole life of a calling that you're supposed to be more than okay. See, because an utmost God did not create almost children. To be almost means to be not quite, nearly, barely. So even though my family was stuck in a moment that we just couldn't get out of, to quote the great Bono, I knew that somehow, some way, that my family was going to get a break. But if we got that break, you got to go through the break, and you have a breakthrough. See, some of you, by the end of the year, you're going to have a breakthrough. You don't want to have a break sit or a break stand. You want to have a breakthrough. Is there anybody besides me that believes you're going to get a breakthrough? And... So Robert came to me and he says, um, they're offering me this TV show called Allie McBeal, and I think I'm going to pass. I said, I think we should probably take it because a lot of the, the films are not trying to hire you because of the, the insurance rules, and people are afraid to insure you because you're challenged with addiction. And he ended up taking Allie McBeal, and then he won an Emmy, and then he started getting little films, and then he came to me and he said, they, they want me to play this thing called Iron Man. <laughs> True story. He goes, dude, they want me to wear a red suit. He says, but I like the other side of Iron Man. He said, because I got to play this guy that's a little bit more like me named Tony Stark. I want you to hear me, please. The beauty of my life is I get to see people that are so stuck in a setback that they sit in a setback, they settle in a setback, and they cement themselves in a setback, and then I, I see them get a break, like what's going to happen to you. Some of you will be so far out of debt in three years, you won't even remember what debt smells like. 
Some of you are going to own one company, two companies, three companies, four companies, five companies. Clap your hands like it's a possibility. Come on. I was with my good friend, P. Diddy. If you don't know him, he's an um, entrepreneur. And we were at his $45 million house the other day. I spent three days with him just talking about life and stuff we're doing. So I was interviewing his mother because you could find out a lot about a guy from his mother, you know. I talked to Brad Pitt's mother at lunch, and she said everything Brad did, that he, she, she saw it coming, that he was going to do it. Katy Perry's parents, my great friends, they, they, they said they saw that coming too. And, 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 and even Dawn DeWest, before she went to heaven, Kanye's mother said, I, I saw that coming too. Now, I want you to hear me. When I talked to Diddy's mother, she said, I, I didn't think it was going to be at this level. You know, he's right at about a billion dollars. She said, but I knew there was something special about him. See, what if there's something special about you, but yet you are stuck in an almost life? The Bible says, unrelenting disappointment leaves you heart sick. Let me unpack that. The word unrelenting means it keeps happening. It keeps happening. And so, so my, my, my father died, and then two years later, my sister was being driven by her friend, and she was driving in the fog, and the friend thought that there was an off-ramp, and there wasn't, and, and my sister was in a car accident and the other two ladies survived and my sister died and so then my 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 father died and two years later my my sister died and it, it just it just looked like I was gonna be stuck. I didn't know that I would do all these projects with Oprah Winfrey. I didn't know I'd have a new project with AMC Theaters coming out at which Oprah Winfrey is gonna host for me. I didn't know I'd have a new book deal coming out with HarperCollins in March. I didn't know I'd be working on a new movie right now with Will Smith. It just, it just kind of, it just kind of looked like I was just going to be stuck in an almost life. Unrelenting disappointment can leave you heart sick. Now that's not good because joy is comes from your heart, and faith comes from your heart, and strength comes from your heart, and courage comes from your heart, and, and so does jealousy. That's why there's so many haters nowadays. <laughs> I, I, I've sat here almost the whole day listening to every speaker because I believe in cheering the next guy on. My goal is you, you, you do laps around me, yo. I want to see Cody just do laps around me. Clap your hands if you hear what I'm talking about. Come on. Come on, people. So, so unrelenting disappointment can leave you heart sick. And, 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 and that's where a lot of you are, you're heart sick. Because you're disappointed. Disappointed with your, with your daughter, disappointed with your son, disappointed with your marriage, disappointed with your weight, disappointed with this country, disappointed with racism, disappointed with yourself. Unrelenting disappointment can leave you heart sick, can leave you heart, pay attention, sick, can leave you heart sick. When I found Robert, he was heart Sick. I was talking to my good friend Charlie Sheen. He's been my buddy for 23 years. And, you, and you're thinking, they said you were a great life coach. How come we haven't fixed him yet? <laughs> I said, it's not over. <laughs> I said, yo, Charlie, how come you like to medicate yourself so much? And he said, so I, so I don't have to feel my own pain. I, I think we've become a culture who medicates ourselves, not just with the obvious addictions, but many times with being busy, where we are human doings rather than human beings. 
if you ever have a conversation with me, which probably I have had with, with a lot of you, you notice that I actually am listening to you. <laughs> and, and you notice that I'm not texting while I'm talking to you. Because you never know what amazing, brilliant things can come out of somebody's mouth that you do not expect. Unrelenting disappointment can leave you heart sick, but a sudden good, but a sudden good, but a sudden good, and the word good there means a sudden God-like kind of break can turn your life around. Somebody here in October, November, December is about to get a sudden God kind of break. You should clap your hands like that's going to happen. Come on, people. I, I was speaking at this event, and you, you, you should really pay attention to who might be in the room. Because I was speaking at this event, and this lady, she was filming me, but I didn't know who it was. It was Oprah's executive producer of 22 years. And, and while she was filming me, she was filming me, and Oprah was watching me live. Hey. And, and, and Oprah and I have had a lot of friends in common, and Quincy Jones had been telling Oprah for years, you gotta get Tim, and she just didn't pay attention, but now her executive producer was filming me, and she liked my energy, and she liked my humor, and my content, and so my life was about to shift. And I remember the lady stood in line, there was this long line to talk to me, and the lady stood in line, she said her name, and I went, whoa, I, I know you are, the executive producer of the Oprah Winfrey Show for over 20 years, and she says, that's me. And she says, Oprah would like to know if you could come to her house on Monday. It was Thursday. How many of you know I did not check my calendar? <laughs> so there's little Timmy's story from Compton that has had my successes look at me look at me look at me but oprah was about to sprinkle her oprah dust on me <laughs> so i'm sitting with oprah you know how it is when you sit in her backyard <laughs> and she says i don't know why tim's story but I feel led to open my world to you. And she did. She started calling me her spiritual advisor, having me speak at her staff, put me in her Believe documentary, put me on Super Soul Sunday, which I broke the record for as many times as they kept putting it on. <sighs> Called people, opened doors, and I remember my buddy Smokey Robinson said to me, little brother, I was watching the TV when Oprah was interviewing you. And I said to my wife, Frances, little brother's life will never be the same again. And guess what? He was right. <laughs> Come on, clap your hands. <laughs> Come on. Say this, say unrelenting disappointment. Who would admit in the afternoon here you've been through some disappointments? You better lift your hands or you are lying up in here. Can leave you heart sick. I'm almost done, I don't talk long. But a sudden, hey, a sudden, what? A sudden, a sudden good break, but here's the challenge with you guys. I wish I could coach some of you because some of you, when you are hurting, you go singular, singular. Me, me, I, I. Remember I'm part Spanish? It's like the Spanish kid comes home to his mother and says, mommy, mommy, all the kids in school say I have a big head. And she goes, no, you don't, mijo. In other words, he did. <laughs> Almost done. 
when you're when you're hurting, you go singular. I, I, I. Look, when you're feeling good, plural. Unrelenting disappointment can leave you heart sick, little Timmy story. But a sudden good, a sudden good, a sudden good, a sudden good break. You better get ready because a sudden good break is about to hit somebody's life. Hit, come on, clap your hands if you believe that. Come on, it's gonna, come on, it's gonna. Say, say this, say, say different, say better, more magical. I close with this, watch. The word magical means extraordinary. It means, watch, astonishing. It means irregular. <sighs> to think that I go from a house when I was a kid, if seven people in a two-bedroom house to, to then living in Beverly Hills with a house with seven bathrooms and an elevator and Ma Madonna as my neighbor. People always say, oh my God, how did it happen? Tell me, like, the mindset. To me, I don't believe in chasing dreams. I believe in cooperating with what heaven has said about you. And heaven has said, you are going to do amazing things not at an almost, not even at a most, but at an utmost level. I'm done talking. Clap your hands if this makes any sense. Come on, clap your hands. Stand up and keep clapping. Come on. Okay, I'm gonna see if you turn my mic up if you just stay standing and you guys are awesome. Look at me. Thanks for showing up for COVID in the midst of COVID-19 and look at me. Please don't give up on yourself. Somebody needs you to rise and let's, let's, let's build each other up. There's like a, a two minute video they're gonna show about this new thing I'm doing. For 10 years, people have been asking me to start coaching them as life coaches because as many of you know i coach the biggest stars in the world i have over 300 entertainers that i work with over 300 and 80 percent of them i do not mention because i have to sign a waiver the only ones i mention is they say mention me because it's part of my story but 80 percent i cannot talk about but for many many years people have asked me to create a, a life coaching school curriculum and, and let me let me say why would i say that to people that are in your business because i think it's easy to throw away employees i would rather train them and life coach them to be the world shaker they're supposed to be someone wave your hands if this makes sense it's easier to throw away family members that are goofy and you don't want to see them at thanksgiving come on but what if I trained you to life coach them and you became a, a walking answer to prayer to somebody? I had 12 people kill themselves on my watch last year alone, 12. And here's how it works. They contact our office knowing I'm Tim's story and they say, for real, I'm taking myself out. I need to talk to Tim. Every time I talk to him, so many times I talk them out of it. 12 times they still went through with it. So to me, it's not a joke, it's not a game. 
We're living in a real war. And so how awesome would it be if you were equipped to learn to coach somebody out of a crisis? Who would like to learn how to coach somebody out of a crisis, okay? And so uh, if you guys get in this program, we're giving a large portion back to Cody and everything that they're doing, okay? So do you guys have the commercial? Okay, let's start the commercial and you guys can sit down and thank you very much. There's an interesting relationship between the conductor and the coach, the direction, the inflection, the sound, the voice. When life tries to take me down to a whisper, just shout on purpose. For three decades, he has been summoned to transform people into champions. By helping to reshape thinking, he activates the miracle mindset in those who have been stuck in the quicksand of their setback, pushing, encouraging, and forging a pathway towards a breakthrough in the harvest. Tim Story has written the playbook for how to win when your back's against the wall. The chase is not about pace. A comeback is not a go back. Your mess is your message. Tim Story's Master Comeback Masterclass, seven week intensive. Never before has his catalog been combined with years of counsel with celebrities, politicians, athletes, thought leaders, and international diplomats until now. In this masterclass, you will learn the mindset of the comeback, explore the secrets of the comeback coach, master living with magical confidence, and in this course, you will build your very own comeback action plan with Tim Story. You will also receive a certificate of completion and gain lifetime access to the Tim Story exclusive live sessions. This has never been done before. Learn the tools to master your comeback for yourself, your family, and those that you are called to serve. Classes begin November 15th. Sign up today. All right, how many would do that if I gave it to you for free? Just lift your hands. That was almost all of you. So let me just say this, just please hear me. Does anybody know how to do the Heimlich maneuver? Okay, I saw a guy ch choking at a restaurant one day, so I decided to learn how to do the Heimlich maneuver, okay? And so I learned how to do it. And it was really weird that within a five-year period, I helped save three people's lives. One guy was falling over, I was, I was at a conference, he was falling over, he had turned blue in an office and he was choking, he was gonna die. But I, but I learned the Heimlich just because, it just came to my mind, I'm gonna learn how to do it. And so could you imagine by taking a class like this, this intensive course, it's taken me, 20 years to develop with seven psychologists, psychiatrists, that you could learn like something as good as the Heimlich to save somebody's life and help take them to a whole nother level. So the next slide, if you could just put that. So everything's there. Could you guys just take out your phone and at least take a picture of it? Can you guys do that real quick? So this is not for everybody. This is for just you kind of people who like saving lives and taking people to another level, okay? All right, so I want you to look at me for 15 more seconds. I wanna say this to you. You may not be what you wanna be, but thank God you're not what you used to be. How many of you are so grateful for how far you've come in life, okay? What a privilege to talk to you, thank you very much. Clap your hands one more time for Cody. Give him a big clap. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're gonna love. It's right there, click on it, see you in there. Thank you so much. I wanna thank Cody and Lauren for putting this on. Give those guys a big hand for doing this. Amazing, amazing event, okay? Amazing, really, you guys are awesome. Like, when he called and said, hey, would you do this deal? The fact that they're willing to